What's up everybody and welcome back to Analyzing the Greats, where we look at some of the greatest distance runners of all time and analyze exactly what made them so great. In this episode, we're looking at Meb Kaflesgi of the United States. And Meb Kaflesgi is a four-time Olympian, a three-time national cross-country champion, a New York Marathon champion, and also a Boston Marathon champion. And also in 2004, Meb famously won the silver medal in the Athens Olympics in the marathon. It was awesome. I remember watching that race. It was just amazing to see. Between the years of 2004 and 2016, Meb proved himself to be an international powerhouse over the marathon distance. And at the age of 41, he actually qualified for his fourth Olympic team by placing second at the 2016 Olympic marathon trials. Meb is clearly a runner whose age never really caught up to him and his running resume is pretty impressive. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of his races and see what we can learn. All right, everyone, so the first video we're gonna take a look at is the 2014 Boston Marathon. And if you don't know, this is the year after the bombing of the Boston Marathon and Meb Kofleski was actually able to pull out the victory and he did it in a very unorthodox way. He got out early and got out fast and separated himself from the rest of the pack. And he was kind of just able to hold on and uh, nobody ever caught him. It was a really interesting race and it was a very emotional race because this is, again, the year after the bombing. But we're gonna take a look at some form here and. Mepka Flesky for me is, um, you know, one of classic marathoners. He's uh, uh, he's actually not incredibly efficient when it comes to his stride, but um, the ability for him to conserve energy is really impressive. So here's a good picture of him. It does look like he hears heel strikes a little bit. Uh, and one thing I've noticed is his when he runs, his shoulders kind of shrug up and down. It's not incredibly smooth, but he's got incredible body position. His chest, body, nice and tall, and his head. I mean, it, it's like almost motionless. Um, and here is towards the end of the race, you get a little chance to see him when he's in a lot of pain. Again, not much motion in his head, but again, his arms are just, uh, they kind of come out wide. You can see here we're going to slow down. They kind of come out wide a little bit and they come inside. His shoulders do that kind of up and down shrug thing. It's it's a little little interesting, but, but again, he's able to conserve this energy and he sort of has this, um, I wouldn't say sluggish stride, but sort of an effortless kind of um, balanced cadence stride. You know, I think he's right around probably between 170 and 180 steps per minute constantly on his stride. Uh, he doesn't overstride. He doesn't have a huge um, back kick or anything like that. Uh, really efficient. Um, so he's kind of suited for the marathon pretty well in that regard. But, you know, this is after two hours and he's coming up on the finish here. And right around this point is when he finally knew he had the victory. There were a few people catching him, but he was able to pull out the victory. Really impressive performance. First Boston Marathon victory. And uh, yeah, you can tell he's pretty happy there. And who can blame him? Now we're going to shift to the New York Marathon. This is in 2009. This is the start of the race. They're going uphill. Um, New York, the New York Marathon is known for the uh, uphill start. But there he is kind of tucked in the middle of the pack. And this is... Uh, I wanted to show this race because, you know, Meb is primarily a marathoner. And earlier in his career, he ran the 10,000 meters, but uh, he really became just a really good marathoner for over a decade. But right around here is around 20 miles, I want to say. This is when he decides to make his move. He's a really strong runner, so around 20 miles, he, he understood he had a lot more left in the tank. Uh, and he's taken off here. And again, I want to showcase this, uh, this interesting stride he has here. Again, it does look like slight heel strike. But right here, his shoulders really look like they're bouncing up and down really high. Um, compare him to the runner behind him, it d there isn't, uh, the runner behind him doesn't seem to have much of a shoulder, sh a shoulder bounce, which I've never really seen before, but Kofleski does seem to have some of that, but you can't really argue against results because he won. I mean, he makes it work. It's not terribly efficient, honestly. It does look like he lands with a lot of, a lot of uh, impact. Uh, there's a nice push up. Um, but here is the final video, and I wanted to showcase some of his training, because in this video, he definitely looks a lot smoother. He's got a slight heel strike again, um, but again, his body position is great. His head hardly moves at all. It's almost like a shuffle. I think that's the, the appropriate word. It's sort of like a shuffle, uh, but a very efficient shuffle and obviously a very powerful shuffle. And if you're wondering, this video is an eight-mile tempo run, and he used to train in Northern California. I know he's trained in a few other places, but I'm pretty confident this is in Northern California near Bear, Big Bear Lake, obviously in the winter because there's ice everywhere, but um, his stride is very interesting to me because in some, some races and some training videos, he seems to have sort of a bouncier stride, whereas in this one, he looks very smooth, uh, and his heel strike looks a lot less in this video, 
Um, but his arm carriage is really relaxed. He's got a really relaxed arm carriage. Sort of looks like his right arm comes up a little more forward than his left arm, but nothing too over-exaggerated again. Um, it, this is kind of a, a good video to showcase why he's probably quite successful in a marathon. He doesn't have much of an impact when he lands, at least sometimes he doesn't. Might be deceiving in some videos when he looks like he's landing hard, but uh, I believe he he probably averaged well under 5 minute pace per mile in this video. And look at that beautiful scenery, wow. Mep Kuflesgi is clearly an American legend and um, one of the greatest marathoners in American history, no doubt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go ahead and give Meb Kaflesky a score. And remember, we are ranking him on a scale of 1 to 100. So let's go ahead and take a look at his results. All right, so I'm going to run through some of these and uh, let you know my thoughts here. So for running mechanics, you kind of heard some of my thoughts in the, uh, in the video. I think his shoulder uh, movement up and down kind of hinders his mechanics. Uh, and uh, as you saw, he kind of heel strikes as well. I think he could stay a little bit... Um, more forward on his landing and it'll be a little more smoother in his arms. Potentially that could have, uh, you know, given him a little more benefit in the marathon, so I give him an 8. For the mental toughness, I think that one was an easy one. He's been around for over a decade. Uh, he won Boston Marathon because he ran it in a very tough fashion, so I give him a 10. Kick? I've honestly uh, never really seen him display a very strong kick. I do remember seeing him outkick Abdi Abdi Rahman in the 10,000 meters back before 2004, um, but previously, he really isn't known for his kick, um, but I do know he's capable of capable of shifting pace. So I give him an eight here because I have seen him kick, but he's just not typically using it. Career longevity also that was an easy one, a ten. Um, he qualified for the Olympics when he was 41. He's been doing it for over a decade, so easy easy uh, answer there, ten. For championship performances, give him a nine. He has uh, done some pretty good championship performances. He's a New York Marathon champion. He's a Boston Marathon champion. Uh, he's a three-time U.S. cross-country champion, um, and he's qualified for the Olympic Games four times. And he also has the Olympic silver medal from Athens, and he actually got fourth in 2012 in a marathon. Couldn't give him a 10, but uh, I think he's done quite well, so I gave him a 9. Running range, I gave him an 8 here as well because he's really typecast as a 10,000 meter runner. Uh, occasionally he'll run a half marathon, but he's also primarily a marathoner. Um, no, he's not, I don't think he's broken four minutes in the mile. I'm not saying that that's, you know, I think he's run like a 402, 403, which is very impressive. Uh, but he certainly doesn't have the, the range of a, a Haile Gabriel Selassie or a Kenanisa Bekele, so I gave him an 8. Tactical awareness. I gave him a 9 here, which is a great score because I think he really does have um, a grasp on how to respond in the races. And, um, you know, Boston Marathon, he pushed out front, and that paid off for him. He must have known he was in pretty good shape. Um, and same thing in the New York Marathon in 2009. He pushed the pace when he felt good uh, and came up with a victory, so gave him a 9. And personal bests, gave him a 9 here as well. He does have some good times. He has a 27, a 13, 10,000 meter PR, which was the American record for 9 years. That was a really good personal best. And he also has a 13, 11, 5K, pretty good. Uh, and, um, you know, at 208 Marathon isn't great, but it's pretty solid, so um, I give him a 9 here. For records broken, I also gave him a 9, because, uh, you know, he does have some good times as well. This is sort of like personal bests. It's uh, in the same vein. American record in the 10K for 9 years. He broke that record, and it stood for a while. But he also has the Masters Marathon record for the United States with 2 hours and 13 minutes, so gave him a 9. And for adaptation, I gave him a 10. I think he has stayed um, consistent and quite... Um, pertinent when it comes to the marathon scene for a long time. He's adapted to changes over his career um, for over a decade, and when he changed uh, direction from the track to the roads, obviously he made that transition well, um, and I just think he's made a, a, you know, adaptation bodes well for him, so I give him a 10. And in total, he gets a 90. Great score from Ebka Flesky, and I think that, you know, that's that's pretty fair. I, I think a 90 for him uh, crosses over. For 90 for me is when you kind of really get up there with some of the greater runners ever. I think he certainly is capable of being ranked uh, with some of the big names. He's been around for such a long time, and he was so dominant in the United States in the marathon for so long. Um, I think uh, 90 is a good score for him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Meb Kaflesky. Um, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Disagree? Um, I'd love to know your thoughts. And um, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. And also, feel free to look at my Patreon account. The link will be in the description. 
Um, there are options to do $1 a month, $5 a month, or $10 a month if you're crazy. Uh, I will be able to see your recommendations for runners there. I've seen y'all are very interested in different runners, and I would love to look into them, and I would love to know what runners are being demanded the most. So feel free to check that out. It really helps helps the channel, helps support me, and um, you know, y'all will get cool perks as well, so feel free to check that out. But again, I want to thank you for watching. Um, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.